Today's brief has been created with open source information readily available on the internet as well as books. However, take it with a pinch of salt because some aspects have been kept secret due to said country's official secrets act. And sometimes Wikipedia is probably the best place to find the information. So sit back, relax, and let's get into today's briefing. Following on for the Type 052 Charlie comes the Type 052 Delta or NATO designation Lu Yang 3 class guided missile destroyer forming the mainstay class for the People's Liberation Army Navy Surface Force. Designed off the previous 52 Charlie hull, the 52 Delta would be planned as a 25 strong class, designed as a multi-purpose destroyer in the main strength being anti-air. The class would be ordered in the early 2010s, planned to utilise the Type 052 Charlie hull and forward superstructure but making modifications to make these ships slightly longer and better than their predecessors. These vessels would be 157 metres long, 17 metres in beam, 6 metres draft, and have an overall displacement of 7,500 tonnes. Propulsion comes from a combined diesel or gas propulsion system, powering two screws for 32 knots and a cruising speed of about 16. These vessels would support the new Dragon Eye 4 multifunctional dual band Acer radar on four flat planier arrays, which replace the original curved arrays on the 52 Charlies. The expected range on this radar is about 200 nautical miles, and this is what gives it the quote unquote Chinese Aegis vessel. Aside from Dragon Eye, the ships also sport one Type 517 Knife Rest Delta early warning radar, capable of detection of about 250 nautical miles. One Type 364 Surface Search Echo Foxtrot Band Radar with an expected range about 80 nautical miles. One Bandstand Target Acquisitional India Slash Juliet Band Radar, expected range is about 135 nautical miles. One Type 344 Fire Control Radar for the main gun, expected range is about 20 nautical miles. And finally, one Bridgemaster E Navigational India Band Radar, cable detection out to 35 nautical miles. The ships also sport a hull-mounted sonar as well as a towed array sonar. The weapon systems consist of two 32-cell vertical launch silos for eight YJ-18 NATO designation CH SSN-13 Shredder anti-ship missile, with a kill line of about 220 nautical miles and a speed in the regions of about Mach 2.5. 56 HHQ-9 surface-to-air missiles Cable striking targets out to 108 nautical miles, with speeds up to a staggering Mark 4.2 and above. The vertical launch cells can also be capable of taking the CY-5 ASW missile. Secondary weapon systems consist of one 130mm main gun, capable out to about 16 nautical miles, one 24-cell HQ-10 surface-to-air missile system, capable of out to about 4.9 nautical miles. On early units, one Type 730 30mm Seawiz, and on later units, the Type 1130 30mm Seawiz, both effective out to about 1.8 nautical miles. Airborne capabilities consist of a flight deck and hangar, capable of taking a KA-27 Helix, as well as a Z9 Harbin, and these are on the earlier models. However, on later units, the ships are extended by 4 meters to take a Z20 medium lift helicopter. 25 vessels have been ordered, with 13 built as of February 14th, 2021. With the first vessel, the Kunning, expected to have launched in about 2012 and commissioning on March 21st, 2014. Her sisters would follow on. Chengxia would launch on Christmas Day, 2012 and be commissioned in August 12th, 2015. Hefi would launch on July 1st, 2013, commissioning on December 12th, 2015. Yinshun would launch on March 30th, 2014, and commissioning on July 12th, 2016. Xinning would be launched on August 26th, 2014, commissioning on January 22nd, 2017. Xinmen was launched on December 30th, 2014, and commissioned on July 8th, 2017. Urumshi was launched on July 7th, 2015, and commissioned in January 2018. Nanjing was launched on December 28th, 2015, and commissioned on April 10th, 2018. Taiyan was launched on July 28th, 2016, and commissioned in late November 2018. Ho Hot was launched on Boxing Day 2016, and commissioned on January 12th, 
2019. Goyang was launched in late November 2015 and commissioned in mid to late February of 2019. Shendu was launched at some point in 2016 and would commission in late November 2019. Chi Chi Ha was launched in mid-2017 and commissioned on August 8, 2020. Two stretch variants have also been built as well, with Zibo launching on July 2018 and commissioning in mid-January 2020. And last of all, Hoyanan will be launched on August 15, 2018 and commissioning on August 14, 2020. There are about 10 ships ordered and laid down, but at this moment, we don't exactly know their names, pennants, or if they're the 157 meter or 161 meter variants. Looking at the service careers of these vessels, there is literally the square root of nothing on the internet about their careers, and most pages that I use for sources, and there's quite a lot of sources, literally just talk about the ship's weapons and radars. But I've looked into enough Chinese vessel classes and looked at enough movements via open source to work out exactly what these ships are probably doing. I'm 98% confident in what I'm about to say is probably true. And this is basically conducting NEF patrols in the Gulf of Adan in the Indian Ocean, protecting Chinese flagged vessels from pirates operating in the area, as well as operating out of Djibouti for about three months at a time but also operating in the South China Sea, defending China's interests in the areas. Now, their primary role is an anti-air warfare destroyer, so I expect they would appear as the main escorts to the Chinese Liaoning and Shandong, the People's Liberation Army Navy Surface Forces aircraft carrier force. Current open source intelligence suggests that as these ships are in service with the North Sea, East Sea and South Sea's fleet. There is about 10 ships still in order to be laid down and launched, but the class has actually been succeeded, ironically enough, by the Type 055 class cruiser. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching, hopefully you learned something new. Don't forget to like the video before you leave, leave a comment, and uh, give a suggestion of what you think I should do next, as well as if you have a question you want me to answer, please put it in the comment section on the pinned post. Apart from that, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I recommend doing so because I have some very interesting content coming out very soon. If you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon page, but that's entirely up to you. If you do so, there is some interesting perks to actually being a Patreon to the page. Apart from that, all you need to do is say thank you very much, have a nice day, and uh, here's a sneak peek at uh, next week's video.